and they both involve going all the way back out, which will not respawn all of those mooks. We don't have to have to worry about that. But we will have to get past the monkeys here. These guys will pretty much stay passed out till the end of the chapter. However, I believe all the enemies in... Yeah, all the enemies to the south should have uh, recovered. Which means we're going to get into a few fights. But I'm not going to be seeking out the fights here. Because frankly, there is no need to right now. Thankfully, you can't actually hurt your friends. So now that we've seen all that, making our way back to where we, uh, where I was talking with the rock, the rock with the face on it, is where we are headed. Only now that we've actually seen that, there should be two things that change in that zone. Yeah. One of the two things that changes is that rock with a face on it will actually do what it's supposed to do. first one will be the rock with the face on it. The second one will be a new enemy that's walking around. And this new enemy that's walking around. Well, um, kind of a jerk. And to actually fight him, I, I need a bunch of levels 
because the only way you encounter this thing is if you mean to. It, it's one of those fights. It actually will not encounter it. It actually will not fight you on its own. Unlike the other traveling sprites here that if they bump into you, you fight them. You actually have to get up next to its sprite and hit the A button to initiate combat. But, um, yeah. And it is... It is a um, good deal tougher than the actual final boss of the area. Because I could totally go to the final boss of the area right now and beat it fairly handily. I mean, I wouldn't be, you know, per I'm, I might take a few hits, but... I would be able to beat it and just, it wouldn't take me too much, you know, too much effort to beat it. This thing, on the other hand, and no, it's not these two stooges. And he laughs at his friend. His friend is now stuck over the pit. He walks over his friend and... Watches his friend fall in there where we were. And he panics. Thankfully, we don't have to deal with that pit again because it's going to be just like last time. We jump over it and Gory somehow manages to travel the entire world. Go figure. So, first thing, all the enemies are back. Okay, that's a safe enemy. And we need to clear most of them out. Because if we do not clear most of them out trying to do the thing with the uh, face on the rock is a little difficult. So once again, we have to clear everything out. And um, just in case you're kind of despairing about how much combat there has been in this first chapter we've looked at, um, just, just to put things into perspective, there is a later chapter that has exactly one mandatory fight in it. And that's fighting the boss. That's it. One mandatory fight. So, not every chapter is going to be like this. Also, the rest of the chapters have characters who know the English language. And how many not mandatory? Uh, if you want to do them, and believe it or not, I don't think there's actually a... There's kind of a reward for doing them, but I don't recall what it is off the top of my head. But there's kind of an arcade machine you can play, which has just a series of battles. And I think that goes up to, like, level 15. So you can have, like, 15 non-mandatory fights. Total. In this one chapter.
No, I meant no mandatory fights. See, technically you have no random encounters in this chapter either. They're not random. You pretty much get the same seed layout every time you come in here. It just, the only thing random is how they move. Once they get put on the field. But there are no random encounters in here. Well, it is, it's the exact same number of enemies and the exact same type of enemies. It places the exact same fights on the field. They just kind of wander around a little bit. That, that's the only randomness there is to it. Yeah, for all the fighting we're doing in the caveman chapter, when we get to another chapter entirely, there's going to be one fight we have to do. See if I can track down the new enemy that I will not be fighting unless I absolutely have to. At least early on. Because I literally cannot beat him in my current state. I am not strong enough to fight this thing. I still need about six, seven more levels before I can take on the new thing. Which, we will be taking it on, don't get me wrong. fighting it. I can't say we'll be beating it, but we will be fighting it. But you notice that the enemies around here are pretty much pushovers at this point. Thank you. 
right skill up there. You see that little symbol? The mammoth symbol? Yeah, that indicates that wherever that cloud came from is a very specific mammoth. Luckily, we can't just bump into him and have it work. But that mammoth is called King Mammoth. And, um, he, he's kind of mean. Why didn't I move that? I don't know. I'm starting to pay less attention here. Not good. 
mostly because I'm thinking about what I'm going to have to do once I clear this little area out. There are going to be two things I have to do when I clear this area out. Both of the things that I've mentioned before. I think it should be cleared out well enough. If it's not completely. Count to 100 again. sound of the door opening. Now if we press A for any reason, the uh, door closes. But it's this door right over here. Which opens up a uh, room which contains an obelisk. Hello, 2001 A Space Odyssey. Now, if you remember 2001 A Space Odyssey, how's anyone supposed to know that? You're not. You're supposed to just kind of dink around with it, as far as I know. I don't think there are any hints anywhere in the game that tell you press A at that face a hundred times to get yourself a uh, Easter egg that references 2001 A Space Odyssey. But if you remember the start of that movie, there's an obelisk and cavemen figured out how to use bones as tools to beat each other over the head with. So we're going to poke the obelisk. It wants an item. So we, uh, we give it a bone. And in doing so, it drops down a basic rock. Which, basic rock? Come on, how good is that? It's actually really nice. It can be used as an item in battle, which I will demonstrate. Because everything in here is respawned. So. And the thing is, we can use it over and over and over again. We don't have to use it just the once. It's multiple use. And it gives us something called Angel's Research. So we click on it. And it tells us that the thing has 144 hit points. It drops its IQ and does other random... And it can do random debuffs. So that's very well and good that it tells us how many hit points the thing has. And it kind of does a debuff on it. You know, that's nice. And it's kind of like instant. That tells us that has 128 hit points. And kind of takes out its leg. Basic rock, which is a scanner, exactly. <laughs> 
And we get another meaty bone, gotta hide. However, as nice as that is, we can take that rock and equip it to give ourselves a bunch of IQ points at the cost of a little bit of power. We want to do this. Yeah, we're giving ourselves 66 IQ points. So now we are a smart caveman, which kinda like 2001 A Space Odyssey, I guess. So now, let's go ahead and save it. So, now we need to track down the mammoth. And by track down the mammoth, I mean I mean something else entirely. Which hopefully we won't have to depopulate the area yet again. the mammoth I want to show you the main problem with this the mammoth moves extremely quickly yeah, everyone disintegrated from the screen Oh wait, I don't even have to do that now, do I? 